make sure that everyone is happy. All right. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Another minute here and then we'll get started. By show of hands, uh, how many people have used ribbon, heard of ribbon, see it on a contract, anything, um, have any exposure to ribbon by show of hands if anyone's on video. I see a couple of hands, all right. Nice, all right. So we're, we're gonna do a general 101 overview of the program today. Um, but definitely if you've heard of it before and you have more specific questions and you'd like me to dive in deeper to a specific topic, put it in the chat. I will definitely make sure we get to every question in the chat um, and also have time at the end for Q&A so you can unmute and ask questions. And I wanna make sure you guys are leaving this presentation with the full knowledge of the program and completely understand how you can use it. So um, we'll definitely make sure that everybody gets all that information. So I am recording, we will send this out to everyone. So I am gonna just get started here. And if um, you know people join along the way, they'll get the, the copy of the recording so can refer back to it. But again, throw any questions in the chat, we'll make sure everything gets addressed. So um, you know, if there's anything I want you to take away from the presentation today, it's that ribbon is a service that upgrades offers. So in general, like in the most simple terms, what we do is upgrade offers uh, to cash. We remove contingencies and we guarantee the transaction will close. So I always like to use the analogy of insurance. Think of this as like an insurance policy that you're putting on the offer um, to remove all the what ifs from the transaction to provide that certainty um, and to also level up your buyer, You know, make them competitive in today's market. We're leveling the playing field by enabling every buyer to be a cash buyer. So if you took all your buyers out and you know, every time they made an offer, they made a cash offer that was non-contingent. How many more deals do you think that you could close? That's the idea here. Let's give you tools to make the strongest offer in real estate and help your buyers get under contract and get under contract faster. This is a text to sign up. Um, I'll make sure you guys get this information after this presentation on how to get started as well. There's also a link um, that I can send you guys to, let me see if I have it handy. I'll put it in the chat um, that you can use to create an account if you don't already have one. I'll definitely do a quick demo of the site too. So you see how you actually get started and add buyers and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to go over what Ribbon is doing to give agents, um, you know, the advantage, especially in today's market. So how we can help keep you competitive. Uh, how exactly this program works. So how are we actually converting this offer to cash, the different ribbon cash solutions and how much each one of those costs. And then, um, you know, information about qualifying your buyer. How do they actually get approved by ribbon to make that cash offer? So first thing I always like to highlight is that ribbon is not an iBuyer. We tend to get bucketed in the iBuyer category, but ribbon is very different from iBuyers. So you know, open door offer pad, Zillow offers, knock, all of these different programs that are available to buyers that have similar features of ribbon. They're very different in a few different ways. So one being that, you know, ribbon doesn't have our own agents. We're not a brokerage. So we um, have, we require buyers to have representation. So they're partnering with their local agent in order to facilitate a transaction with ribbon. They can't sign up on our platform without you. Uh, we also are not a mortgage company. We're not giving out loans. We're just a third party that's helping facilitate this transaction and help this buyer get under contract. So they are still using their local lender, whoever they want. There's no restrictions. We are an open platform. Um, so we're not forcing them to use like our own mortgage company or anything to um, you know, be able to use our program. And they also don't have to have a home to sell, which is a big one. This is great for first time home buyers as well as someone with a home to sell. So if they, if they don't have a home to sell, they can still use us. If they do have a home to sell, we have nothing to do with that home to sell. So you as the agent can still have that listing. We're not affecting your commissions in any way. So um, those are some of the, the key differences here between Ribbon and some of the other options out there. So we started transacting in um, 2018. Our first deal was done in Charlotte, North Carolina. I know a lot of you are in the Charlotte area. North Carolina is our, our first market. Um, so we've been there for, for quite a while and you know I have built a, a pretty good brand recognition there. 
since we started doing business, we've granted well over $2 billion in buying power at this point. So thousands of families enabled with the ability to make a cash offer through Ribbon. We've seen exponential growth in the last few months, which really shows you there's a huge need in the market right now for buyers to make stronger offers. It's super competitive out there. I'm sure you guys are very well aware. Um, so how we are helping buyers be more competitive in this market is by turning their offer to cash, removing those contingencies and guaranteeing the closing. So how we're doing that is through an addendum. It's a two page addendum. The language there is really easy to read. It's not written in like crazy legal language that's difficult to understand. It's written in a way that a seller or a listing agent can read through and understand what that contract is, but it's two pages. It just tells the seller, if this buyer's financing falls through for any reason, Ribbon's gonna step in and purchase this home on that buyer's behalf. So we'll take over the contract and become the buyer if this buyer becomes ineligible to purchase this home. So um, through that addendum, we are making the offer cash because it's backed by Ribbon's cash. So we're saying financing is not gonna be a reason why this buyer can't purchase a home. So we've removed that financing contingency. We're removing the home sale contingency if they have a home to sell and it doesn't sell in time for them to be able to purchase the new home that they're under contract on, doesn't matter. Ribbon's still purchasing that home for them. So the seller doesn't have to worry about that home sale. Um, so there's no home sale contingency. And also a huge one right now is that we're also removing the appraisal contingency. We're backing this offer with our cash. And um, you know we do offer appraisal protection, which I'll get into in a little bit, but we are not requiring an appraisal to purchase with our cash and that's removing the appraisal contingency as well. So in addition to converting to cash, removing these contingencies, we're also guaranteeing the home will close. So the inspection is the only contingency we're not removing. Your buyer still has that due diligence period to decide if it's a purchase they wanna move forward with. But after that due diligence period, Ribbon is committed to purchasing the home no matter what. So anything that happens at this point, Ribbon is purchasing that home the seller does not have to worry about it falling out of contract. That's why the seller accepts the ribbon offer. It's cash, it's non-contingent, it's guaranteed to close and it's guaranteed to close on time. So most sellers need the cash from their sale in order to move on to the next thing. So with ribbon, they know that for sure, this isn't gonna fall apart at the last minute preventing me from being able to close on my next home and you know, will avoid that whole dreaded domino effect in real estate of one closing, delaying another closing, delaying another closing. So sellers don't have to worry about that with ribbon. They know they'll close on time. They know the deal's not going to fall apart at the last minute. But in addition to that, your buyer's name is still on the contract. So when a seller is reviewing all the different options that they have for offers, maybe they have equally as competitive offers that are cash and non-contingent, but you know maybe they're not guaranteed to close. So that's an additional layer that ribbon offers, um, but also your buyer's name is still in the contract. So like if it's an LLC, an investor, um, you know, it's open door, you know, they have some kind of iBuyer cash offer. They're not selling to a member of their community. They're selling to a business, but with Ribbon, they are selling to a family, a person who actually lives in their community, wants to move into that home and love it like that seller had loved it. So that's another great benefit of, of the ribbon offer. So these are the different ribbon cash solutions. The product here that we're selling is this addendum. So that addendum that upgrades the offer, these are the different outcomes of attaching that addendum to the offer. So ribbon boost um, is uh, the buyer who is able to close on their own, but they needed ribbons addendum to make their offer more attractive. So the, the idea here is like, let's make it as appealing as possible to the seller, you know, with removing the contingencies, making it cash, guaranteeing the closing, increase the likelihood that this seller accepts the ribbon offer over other offers on the table. So you want to level up your, your buyer's offer, make it as attractive as possible and help them get under contract. But that buyer's actually able to close on their own. They don't need Ribbon to actually purchase the home for them. They just need Ribbon to back the offer, provide that insurance policy, that certainty to the transaction um, to help them get under contract. Ribbon Reserve is a bridge loan 
type of solution for someone who can't actually qualify for a bridge loan or you know, it's too expensive or they can't find one or whatever. So ribbon reserve is kind of what like a bridge loan would offer. It's the buy before you sell solution. So this is the, the buyer seller who owns a home, all their equity is tied up in that home and they need to sell it before they can purchase something new, but they want to reverse the order. So what they're doing is saying, okay, I know I want to sell my home, but I don't want to list it until I found something else to move to. So here's a solution you could present to that seller who won't list until they found a new home to get them into something new. You know, you're removing the home sale contingency from the offer, helping them get under contract. They can actually move into the new property and then worry about listing and selling their old home. They can make improvements to it, you know, make some updates, get it staged, have it looking its best so that when it's shown, it's, you know, top notch, perfect condition. And, you know, as agents, I'm sure you realize that if it's something is staged and looking its best, it's going to sell for faster and, and top dollar. So here's a, an option that you can present to that seller to get them out of their home and be able to, um, you know, sell their, their old home while they're no longer living in it. A lot of people working from home right now have kids, pets, it's difficult to keep the home clean. They don't have to worry about it with ribbon reserve. They don't have to worry about moving twice, like getting temporary housing, putting stuff in storage. The transition between homes can be difficult and this ribbon reserve product is really helping to ease that transition. So really great for new construction. Um, it's great for relocation, you know, any kind of upsizing, downsizing, there's really no limits here on what you can use the, the ribbon reserve for. Ribbon rescue is not something we see a lot, but do know that if you're in a situation where suddenly your buyer can't close for another couple months and the seller won't extend the close date, you can add ribbon onto contracts that are already underway. So it's still a possibility to add ribbon onto something that um, you know, you didn't start with ribbon. So the, the fee to use the service is 2% of the purchase price. If ribbon is purchasing the home in order to make an offer with ribbon, you have to have 2% down in earnest money or seller paid closing costs or a combination of the both in order for us to back the offer. We don't collect our fee until closing but we need to know upfront when your buyer makes the offer that they have the money in the contract to cover our fee should we have to purchase the home. So if we don't end up having to purchase the home, you know, we get to closing and that buyer is able to get their loan and they don't need ribbon to actually purchase the property for them, it's 1% of the purchase price. That 1% is just paying for the ability to upgrade the offer, to have ribbon guarantee it, um, and to provide that certainty to the transaction. If Ribbon does have to purchase the home, it's 2% of the purchase price. Uh, we cover closing costs when we purchase the home, it's included in that fee. And then there's rent on top of that um, while we hold the property. So the only cost to use Ribbon is this Ribbon fee and the rent if we have to hold the property. There's no other costs that the buyer can incur using this program. Uh, when they repurchase the home from us, they're buying it back at the same price that we originally purchased it for. So there's no interest charged or anything like that. It's just the fee and the rent while we hold the property. The rent is known up front, so it's not a surprise number to that buyer. It does come back in the qualification process with the um, when we value the, the property. So they do know that number up front. It is a, a flexible rental period, so they only take the time they need. They need two weeks, they take two weeks. If they need the full six months, they take the full six months. Um, it's prorated rent as well. So if they're only using two weeks in the month, they're only paying for two weeks in the month. So all those things make it make it a little easier for, for buyers um, to understand that, that rental period. Only other thing to note is this ribbon rescue. If you're already under contract and you want to add ribbon in at the last minute, it is a 3% fee to do that. We do want to encourage people to originate their offer with ribbon and not wait till the last minute to add us in. But also there's usually a lot of rushing around trying to get that, that deal done if it's a ribbon rescue. So there is a, a higher cost incurred there for um, how quickly we usually have to turn those around. So the qualification process is pretty simple. Two things we have to check before we allow a buyer to make an offer with ribbon. One, that they have pre-approval and that they can actually afford this property. 
Um, and then two, that the, the valuation of the property, uh, you know, what they want to purchase it for is a price that's like reasonable and it will possibly appraise for. So the process here is create the account. So either using that link or the text to sign up that I shared earlier, which I'll make sure you all get, um, but you're creating the account, you're adding the buyer. Best practice is to add the buyer and upload their pre-approval when you start working with them so that you have them all set up and ready to go. It doesn't cost anything or commit your buyer to anything to go through this approval process. So no harm done just to get them set up and have the option available to them. The pre-approval is income assets credit checked. So it does have to be a, a pre-approval letter from any lender. We'll verify with that lender the pre-approval and then grant their buying power based off of what that pre-approval amount is. Uh, the valuation on the property is done similarly to like a desktop appraisal. We are not giving you an official appraisal, but we're giving you a number that we think the home is most likely to appraise for. So this ribbon max value is the maximum amount that we feel the property will appraise for. Uh, this is guaranteed by ribbon. So this is where that appraisal protection comes into play. Max ribbon value 310, we're saying it will definitely appraise for 310. If it doesn't, ribbon's gonna cover the difference. So how the appraisal works is, let's say we gave the max value as 310 in this situation, the buyer wants to use ribbon boost, they're in the process of getting their loan together. And um, you know the appraisal comes back at 308. Ribbon is gonna make up that $2,000 difference between what it appraised for and what we allowed the buyer to make an offer at. So when a buyer makes an offer with Ribbon, there's no risk of it under appraising and the buyer having to scramble to come up with the funds to make up that, that gap um, in order to close. Ribbon's gonna do that. The buyer does not have to pay us back. That is a lost cost to Ribbon. There's no catches here. Um, you are not missing anything. We really do cover that appraisal gap. Um, if there is one, if the buyer wants to offer over our ribbon max valuation, they can, but we do not guarantee that will appraise and they would have to put that overage into their earnest money deposit um, up front so that we knew that they had the cash to cover the appraisal gap if there was one. You're also getting the rental number back with this valuation. So you, your buyer would know what that rental number is and can make the decision on if they wanted to move forward, making an offer with ribbon. The platform is made to be super easy and self-serve. So you can do all of this by yourself, but you do have a ribbon advisor that gets assigned to you when you create an account. They're your go-to for all things ribbon. They can help you expedite valuations. So we can request priority valuations for buyers who are already in our system with buying power set. Those priority valuations turn around in a few hours. So you definitely can get an offer out the same day if you need to, as long as your buyer is already in our system with the buying power set. Once you have these two pieces, that buying power, that valuation, you're ready to make a ribbon offer. Again, the platform is super easy and self-serve. So you can you don't have to wait for your ribbon advisor if you don't want to. Um, you can just go into the site, you would enter in some details about the offer, you know, the offer price, the due diligence end date, the close date, all that good stuff. And then um, you would get access to our addendum, the proof of funds letter, which shows we have the cash we say we do and also um, a seller cover letter, which explains a little bit about the ribbon program to the listing agent and the seller. This is where the differences between North Carolina and South Carolina come into play. So in North Carolina, you can actually fill out the purchase agreement directly on Ribbon's website. We're gonna pre-populate the standard 2T form, which we are updating when they do update it next week. I know that the, there's a change coming to the form. It will be updated on our site as well. So you can fill out all that information directly on the website. In South Carolina, you do have to fill it out outside of the website. So um, we just give you access to download our docs that you can then attach to your purchase agreement and send off to the listing agent. In North Carolina, which is our test market, we are working on a way to get this into every state, but right now it's just North Carolina where you can you know, fill it all out in ribbon. So the timeline here uh, from start to finish on what this process looks like, if your buyer makes an offer with us and then it gets accepted, once it's accepted, they're submitting their deposits just like they normally would be. Again, it has to be at least 2% down in 
deposits. Um, so either due diligence, earnest money, or if their seller paid closing costs, it has to be on the contract somewhere. Um, they're submitting their deposits being held in escrow. Ribbon's not collecting our fee until closing here, but we are making sure that they have the buyer has the funds in the contract to cover our fee should we have to purchase the home. That inspection due diligence period has to be a minimum of seven days from the time that we receive executed documents. During that seven day period, your buyer has to schedule and pay for an inspection, get that inspection report back, um, you know, provide a copy to ribbon, let us review to see if there's any ribbon required repairs. We get back to you in 24 hours on those uh, and then also negotiate repairs with the seller. So you wanna make sure you have enough time to do all of that. What ribbon is looking for on the inspection piece is safety and structural stuff. So um, we're looking for cracks in the foundation, uh, any windows and doors that don't open and close properly that are broken, um, smoke detectors that work, exposed wiring, leaks. Um, those are the kinds of things Ribbon's looking for. Basically we wanna make sure the home is safe for that buyer, especially if we're purchasing and, and they're renting from us that the home is safe for a tenant to live in. And also it's just like a good purchase for your buyer. You know, there it's things that they're gonna to want to make sure are um, you know, good with the home as well. Those ribbon required repairs do have to be completed prior to closing if ribbon is purchasing the property. If the buyer ends up being able to use Ribbon Boost and purchase on their own, those repairs don't have to be completed. It's only if Ribbon is purchasing the property that we care about those repairs being completed. After that due diligence period, this is guaranteed to close. So nothing can happen at this point that's gonna prevent Ribbon from closing on the property. On closing day, um, which can be as little as 14 business days. So really fast, if you need Ribbon to close on that property, if the buyer wants to use Ribbon Boost, make sure you're putting a close date that's realistic for their lender to be able to hit. Um, so on closing day, 1% fee taken from earnest money deposit if the buyer is able to close on their own. If they need Ribbon to purchase the property, it's 2%. Um, we are covering those closing costs. We close on the property, they can move in the next day. That 180 day rental period starts. They can buy back anytime during that period. And then when they repurchase, they're repurchasing for the same price that we bought the home for. And they're incurring their standard closing costs at that repurchase. So they didn't pay closing costs here. They're paying them here. Um, regardless of if ribbon closes or the buyer closes, agent commissions are always paid on this first closing. So if we have to purchase the property and hold it for your buyer, they're not waiting or you're not waiting until they repurchase um, in order to be able to get paid for that transaction. So you will always get paid on this first transaction. Last thing to cover uh, before we get into some of these questions is the home eligibility. We can purchase properties between 150 and 700,000, fewer than four acres of land built in 1975 or later, or has been renovated. By renovated, we mean mechanicals of the home. Um, so if they have original hardwood floors, <laughs> great, uh, but we want to make sure that the HVAC is not original to the home if it was built in 1960. So that's what we're looking for in terms of renovated. Um, it needs to be in a ribbon MSA. So um, in North Carolina, I mean, in South Carolina, we cover pretty much the entire state. There's not a lot that we don't cover, but um, Charlotte, Asheville, Triangle Triad, Wilmington, um, pretty widespread in, in um, North Carolina and then South Carolina, you know, that area of Charlotte that goes into South Carolina, Columbia, Greenville, Myrtle Beach, um, Charleston. So again, really what widespread there. We can purchase condos, townhomes, and single family homes, but you do want to be mindful of any kind of HOA rental restrictions. If there's a rental cap that's met in the community, Ribbon can't purchase that home for your buyer because then they wouldn't be able to rent from us. So you do want to be on the lookout for that and see if you can get exceptions from the HOA if there's an issue there. We can purchase bank owned properties. Um, so no foreclosures or short sales. We can't do mobile manufactured or modular homes and we cannot purchase second homes or investment properties. So you do have to use this service for owner occupied primary residences. So that is it. Um, you know, in addition to making sure that you get paid for the hard work you do, we wanna make sure that 
you have happy clients and you can provide them with an option that helps keep them competitive in today's market and, you know, gets them under contract and gets them into a home. So with that, I will open it up to questions. I'll put this back up. So if you, and also put the link in the chat, and then we'll do a quick demo of the site after um, I go through some of these questions. So first question, if we cover Florida, um, we are launching in Florida next quarter. We were going to be live in Tampa and Orlando. So those are the first two markets in Florida. So you will be able to use ribbon there next quarter. So um, that is on the horizon, very, very close. Uh, is there a flyer information sheet that we can give to our buyers? I'm going to follow up with Sarah after this presentation with a bunch of information. So um, Sarah will send that around to everyone along with this recording so you can refer back to it. So I'll make sure that you all um, get that information. And let's see, it looks like there's a chain here with Sandy. So I'll, I'll get to that last. <laughs> Uh, the issue I've been having with ribbon is the wait time for the ribbon offer is too long, usually 24 hours or so that is a hundred percent. Um, you know, definitely an issue. The market's moving really, really fast. That's why we recommend to get your buyer set up. Don't wait till the last minute to try to get pre-approval uploaded and get buying power set and all that stuff. Have the buyer already in there with the option set. Again, it's free. It doesn't commit them to using anything, but at least the option is prepared so that if you want to use ribbon to make an offer, all you have to do is add the property and then request the urgent valuation from the ribbon advisor. The urgent valuation should come back in, in a few hours. So you should be able to make an offer the same day. If you're not requesting that from the ribbon advisor, the typical turnaround time is 24 hours for valuation. So you are gonna be waiting a while unless you're able to um, reach out to your account manager to request that priority valuation. Um, let's see last two or three properties I've sent for a client. They max the purchase price out 50 K less on all of them. Are you maxed out at 600 K or all the properties just too overpriced? So, um, our buy box is up to 700,000. If you're talking about the valuation that we're providing on the property, um, mm, sorry, I'm reading down on the other exam on the other parts of this question. So if you think basically Sandy can correct me if I'm wrong, I think what you're asking is, you know, we're valuing the property. You don't agree with the valuation. So the home is priced high. Um, our valuation comes in much lower. If you ever disagree with a ribbon valuation, you can always let your, um, you know, ribbon advisor know if you have comps that support a higher number, we will definitely look at that property again and see if we can change the valuation. Now, if your buyer knows for sure that the property is not going to appraise, you know, for, for higher, um, but they still want to offer higher and they're well aware it won't appraise for that much, they can offer over our ribbon max valuation, but they do have to put that overage into their earnest money deposit. The number on a ribbon contract is guaranteed to the seller. So we have to make sure that the buyer has the funds to make up an appraisal gap if they wanna go over what we think the home will appraise for. You also wanna be careful about money being credited back. So if we have to purchase the property, the only way we're getting that money back to the buyer, let's say it did appraise, like they wanted to offer, uh, you know, we valued something at 600, they wanted to offer 650, they put the extra $50,000 down. Um, the only way, let's say it did appraise for 650 and, and, you know, we bought the home and they're buying it back from us. The only way we can get them that $50,000 back is as a seller concession. So if their lender has limits on a seller concession, um, that might be an issue, but, um, you know, we can figure that out. Um, and yes, the, the buyer does need a pre-approval letter, um, income assets credit checked. Most of the offers are now due over the weekend. Is there a rep available to help? Yes, our team is available on the weekends. The, um, you know, to be completely honest with you, you know, we are human, we do eat and sleep and we have families and we, we go out to birthday parties and things like that, but the, we are prioritizing active deal situations on, on the weekends. So if you have an urgent request on the weekends, reach out to your ribbon advisor. If they're not on, there's always someone covering. So someone will assist you in helping to get an offer out on the weekends. Um, so definitely we do work weekends. 
Um, general questions. I would say if you ask a general question on the weekend, you're probably going to get a response on Monday. Again, we are prioritizing active deals over the weekend. And that the best way to reach them, thank you for teeing me up there. I'm going to um, stop sharing this and I will bring up the website here so that I can show you guys what this looks like. So let me share my screen again. So this is what the dashboard looks like when you, you know, create account and log in, you're going to this dashboard where all your buyers names are going to be listed here. Your account manager's contact information, let me move my little video boxes out of the way, um, is up here under need help. Let me get rid of that. So your ribbon advisor's name, email, phone number, and a link where you can schedule a call with them. This will put time directly on their calendar. All this information is in your dashboard when you log in. So um, here's all your ribbon advisors, contact information and how to reach them. There's also this how it works section. So under here, there's um, a doc where you can, you know, review the program. You can send this link to your buyer. Um, there's links to other things in here as well. So video guides, all good stuff there. Uh, also, you can go to this resource center. So in the resource center, we have um, home buyer, agent, lender guides. Oops, I didn't mean to click into the video yet, but there's all these videos here where you can send them those videos, fact sheets to download and send to the buyers. Um, so lots of information here for you to um, reference and to send out to any potential clients. And there's also an example of our program agreement, which the buyer signs and the addendum, which the buyer and seller sign. So all that is here in your dashboard. And let's go into what like an actual client profile looks like. So buying power, you know, you're uploading the pre-approval when the buying power is set, it's going to be up here. When a home is valued, their information is going to be here. I did like a fake offer on this one. So let me, let's add a new buyer so you can see what the whole thing looks like. Now I've just created a shell for this buyer. When I go back to my buying page, it's just their name. And as I get information for them, so if I get their pre-approval, I can upload their pre-approval. I'm in a staging environment, so all this is fake, by the way. Now it says buying power pending. Once the buying power is set, the number is gonna be there. And then if they find a home they wanna make an offer on, I think I have Zillow up so I can actually uh, pull this up. Let's see. Let's take this address here, this beautiful home in Waxhaw, and we'll put it in. Oops. It's going to ask me to confirm the details. It's asking for the offer submission deadline because this helps us prioritize the valuation. If you don't know what it is, just hit add home. You don't have to put anything there. So now it says ribbon max value pending monthly rent pending. Once this information is there and this buying power is set, you'd be, have the ability to start the offer. So this is how you would, you know, if your buyer wanted to make the offer, this is where you'd go and go through the process. And let's go back to someone who does have a home value and then buying power set. Let's see if Jane does too. So again, buying power set home valued go through the offer process. Again, this is North Carolina where you can fill out the information directly on the purchase agreement. I'll show you where it stops for South Carolina. So, okay, you're putting in the offer amount. This is the same on North Carolina and South Carolina It's asking for this information. There's tips along the side here too that help you. Asking for fees and deposits. If there were seller concessions, let's say you had $2,000 in seller concessions, it's automatically splitting it out for you on what the buyer's portion now is of the ribbon fee and what the seller's portion is. Um, if they're most of the time in today's market, there's no seller concessions. So we'll put zero. It's also splitting out automatically between due diligence and earnest money. This is also different in South Carolina because it's not assuming that there's always going to be a due diligence. Um, so everything would be in the earnest money deposit. But in North Carolina, let's say they wanted to put pretty much everything in due diligence and they only wanted to put like 2000 in earnest, it automatically redistributes here to equal 
what this 2% is. So you're not having to do the math. The site does the math for you. It will give you options for our different closing attorneys. There is a drop down here. I am on staging, so it's grayed out. But there are different options here that you can select for a closing attorney. If Ribbon is one of the buyers on the contract, you do have to use one of our preferred attorneys. The reason being is they know the Ribbon process inside and out. So if something changes from being Ribbon funded to buyer funded at the last minute or vice versa, you know they know what to do. They know what the closing statement should look like. It just ensures a, a smoother and faster transaction. That's why we require that. If the buyer's repurchasing from us, they can absolutely use whoever they want to. It's just if Ribbon is a buyer on the contract with the buyer. Uh, if they are going over our Ribbon max value, this is where they're putting their additional earnest money. If they just wanted to make their offer look stronger and put additional due diligence, they can put that here as well. Asking for the due diligence end date, it's gonna remind you it has to be at least seven days. The close date, again, gonna remind you that it has to be at least 14 business days. It asks you for home warranty information. It is not required, but highly encouraged to get a home warranty if a refrigerator busts or something while a buyer is, is, is renting from us before they can repurchase. Ribbon would not cover that in our insurance. Um, it would only be if uh, the, the buyer has a home warranty. So you would select that if they have it. And then you're just gonna confirm the details on all the different parts of the offer, like disclosures and everything like there. If there's anything to edit, like this again is fake. So I'll just put in a fake number. My fake brokerage. This is pulling in from the MLS. If there's no um, information here, you're gonna have to put that in as well. And now if there's any additional addenda you wanted to add, you would select those. It's gonna automatically select the ribbon proof of funds, cover letter, all that stuff. And now it's just gonna ask you to confirm the addenda. Again, this is in North Carolina only. In South Carolina, it ends at, you know, just asking you the questions about the offer because it's not filling it in in the sheet for you. Upload any disclosures. And now here's a summary of the offer. And here's the entire offer to purchase filled out for you. So all the information's there based off of the inputs that you put in. Go through this quickly, but you see it's just the full contract with all the ribbon stuff attached to it. And any additional addenda that you selected would be there as well. And now you can send it off to your buyer to be signed. So um, you'll send it off to them and then be able to send it to the listing agent. So that is the offer process here. Um, I will, I don't see any other questions here. Oh, new construction. So we definitely can do new construction, absolutely. New construction deals are guaranteed from the start. So there's no inspection required for new construction because they have to pass rigorous inspections in order to get their certificate of occupancy. So no inspection required, guaranteed from the start for new construction. Process is a little different. Most builders won't accept third-party addendums. So um, we just add ourselves as a co-buyer on the contract instead. So a little bit different process, but definitely can do new construction. Um, and we definitely can do for sale by owners as well. That was a great question. If something is not on the MLS, you will have to fill out a property questionnaire and provide us photos of the property so we can properly value it. Um, but we definitely can work with things that are not in the MLS. Any other questions? Uh, how would the appraisal contingency work for new construction? So the appraisal contingency is working the same regardless of what the property type is. What we're doing when it doesn't appraise is we're asking the seller to reduce the contract price to whatever the appraised amount is. And then Ribbon is providing the difference via wire transfer at closing. So the seller is still walking away with their full amount that they're owed but now the buyer is paying a portion from their loan and Ribbon's paying the other portion. 
can I share one more time about the ribbon fee? It's not anything extra, but will come out of the DD and EMD when the buyer has already paid. Yes. So the fee is paid from earnest money and due diligence. Um, but your buyer should note that they're, you know, that 1%, if they're using ribbon boost is, you know, they're going to lose that. It's not going towards the purchase of the home. So if they need a certain amount to put down for their loan, they're going to lose 1% to ribbon. So they need to keep that in mind, but they are, we're making sure like we're not collecting it up front, but we're making sure the buyer has it down in deposits. So we know our fee is covered. Any other questions? Feel free to unmute too. I've been talking to myself here for 42 minutes. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all so much for your time this morning. I hope this was helpful and um, you know gave you a thorough understanding of how to use the platform and how you can pitch this to clients and hopefully get some buyers under contract. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hey, Leah. This is yeah. fine. I've got a quick question. Sure. Um, so with the, the fee, I'm unable to understand one thing. Um, due diligence and EMD has to be minimum 2%, as yeah. I understand, and ribbon would be paid at closing out of that um, 2%. But does that not reduce the amount paid to the seller? Because that's generally the amount for the seller, right? So this, so um, due diligence checks are still made out to the seller, but the buyer gets credit for that at closing. So um, we're just taking from the the credits. So there there is funds there to cover the ribbon fee. Oh, okay, understood. And, and I'll give I'll give you guys a copy of the addendum so you can see how it's worded, how we take out the um, take out our fee from the deposits. Understood. Okay, makes sense. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye all.